could throw an elbow to the shoulder or the arm. I'm not crazy about this application. I used to do it a lot. But it's predicated on trapping the wrist. One, two, three. Or breaking that. Or one, two, three. Or one, two, three here. I like these hits here because it doesn't matter if you miss the wrist. You still get your hit. If I go here, but I miss that, he retracts. It doesn't matter, I can still strike here. Whereas, here, let's do that one. If I'm trying to get this, I need to have this to make it work. And I just feel like, I don't, I'm not a fan of trying to grab the wrist out of the air, generally. You could cover and strike. One, two, cover. And then I can strike here, or I can come with my uppercut. Or I can come over the top, of course. I can cover, come over the top. Let's do that side. Cover, come over the top, either with a palm strike, or a punch, or even an elbow if I move in. And then I'm here, boom. Um, go ahead. I can cover and throw that uppercut, and then I'm trapping this, whether it retracts or not. If it retracts, go ahead, punch. Yeah. Still throwing that uppercut there. And then I can take this from here if I want it. Sometimes when you cover, you go from there into the other elbow strike. So cover, go from here into here. Throwing this elbow here or here. I'm trapping that arm. I'm here and then I'm here. I'm not even really getting into follow-ups, right? All of these are just entries. And then you have your follow-up techniques. For example, if I recover here and throw the uppercut, that's a lead-in into the um, elephant head, or quarter Pudukapala, where you work this, get the back of the head, you bring him through, and you're here. Or into a throwing technique here. Or into this, where you pull this down, and you come in, and you knock him back, and then you strike. All these variations have follow-ups. I'm just showing you the, the entry based on the three bead huba. Some people might count a split entry as an, an application of huba. To me, that's more like an application of one beat huba, which is beginner's huba. This is one beat. This is for beginners. So split entry would be an application of one beat because a split entry is a one beat motion, right? He punches, boom, that's one beat. But if you wanted to count it as an application of three beat, then that would be your one and two, and then you'd throw your three. Or one and two, and then your three here. Or one and two, and your three here. Uh, another application of the number three hand in the three beat is the hip check. Here, the hip check. You drive the hip down. And then we can come with whatever from there. Come with our elbows or our knees or maybe a sweep here. So you're just you're turning your palm this way and driving, coming into the, the, the crease of the hip, pushing it down right there. And that's all you want is to get that, that change in his posture. So regardless of what you do with your number two hand, you might go one, two, and then your hip check, boom. Or you might go one, two, and then your hip check. Or if you want to do split entry, and then your hip check. Any of those can work. Uh, there's also just a push, which could be done with your two hand or your three hand. Pushes are underrated in martial arts. Just a simple push where you're pushing the other person away creates space and it creates striking opportunities because it unbalances the person for a moment. So it could be my two hand, and then I follow right away. Or it could be that my two hand is hitting, and then my three hand is pushing, and then I'm following right away with something. So, one, two, or one, two, three, and then you follow, right? You're on them. There's an application that's focused entirely on the hand. Uh, it's not my favorite, but I'll show it to you. It's part of the art. It's one, two, 
where you're, you're knuckle fisting the back of the hand. Let's do that side. One, two, here. You're striking the back of the hand. There's the gunting on the inside of the arm. Uh, again, not my favorite. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a big believer in empty hand gunting motions. With a knife, yes. So the gunting is where you parry and you, you knuckle the biceps with these knuckles right here on the inside at the same time. Oh. And then you come, typically from there, you come out and you get your back fist. But if we're sticking to our hubba, then the other hand would throw something. So I'd be here, boom, oh, I'd throw something with that hand, and then I'd come over the top. Um, or I'd be here, and then I'd go low, and then I'd come high. And the idea is that that stuns or paralyzes the muscle. Eh, I don't know. It'll sting just a bit, but I don't know how effective that really would be. With a knife, yeah, he's got a knife, he comes in with a thrust, and a slash. Slashing the muscle here, and I push that away, and I come over the top. Makes sense with the knife. Empty hands, not so much. Uh, it's a good idea to work it off both sides, so include a switch. So you're doing your huba, and then you throw in a switch, and then you work the other side. And then you're on the other side, and you do one of your applications. Then you go back to your huba, you do one of your applications. And you go back to your hula bug, and you throw in a switch. And you throw it in one of your applications. All right, thanks very much. Please subscribe. I hit 1,000 subscribers today. So, congratulations to me. Yay. Thank you.